Hey, this is T.C. Ristani, the host of the award-winning After Hours with T.C. Ristani, and I want you to check out my late-night talk show. We've had on movie stars, TV stars, stand-up comedians, musicians, playboy playmates, the who's who and the what what. All you got to do is go to my website, tcristani.com, that's tcristani.com, and check out what has been quoted as The Tonight Show from the Twilight Zone. Remember, this is After Hours with T.C. Ristani, and we never close. Welcome to the After Hours with the T.C. Rustani, the podcast. I am T.C. Rustani, your host, and I'm emanating from the palatial podcast penthouse. And I have on all the way on the phone right now, my longtime close personal friend. She's Miss Hollywood, in my opinion, the one and the only Elaine Ballas. What's going on, Elaine? Hey, listen, do you know that we are actually twins? We are twins? You and I are identical twins. Everyone calls me T.C., and why do they call you TC, Elaine? They call me TC because I am beyond technically challenged. Okay, <laughs> there you go, right there. Trim shot. Well, I'm called TC because that's what my mother named me. But that's a different story for a different time. But obviously, you know that since we are twins. We are twins. We're joined together. So I think that she called us both TC. Because she couldn't remember which one was T and which one was C. I'll go with that. I don't believe. Total children. Totally cool. Totally cool, too, yes. Unbelievable. Now, you are my longtime close personal friend. We met many, many years ago on the Green Line here in Boston, Massachusetts, when you were uh, visiting some friends in Brookline, Massachusetts. Isn't that true? Yes, it is true. I remember the Green Line well. I remember it well as well because my limousine was broken down and I was going to visit some friends at the Coolidge Corner in Brookline, Massachusetts, and I had to take the Green Line. For those of you who are listening outside of the Boston area, the Green Line is our version of the subway, one of the lines on the subway, and it's a trolley car. And I was sitting there in the front seat of the trolley car on my way to Brookline, Massachusetts, and all of a sudden someone goes, oh, my God, it's T.C. Rustani, and you come up running me, and I had to sign an autograph and take a picture and whatnot, and we've been friends ever since. Do you still have the picture? Somewhere. I do have that picture. Do you have it? I don't. I lost it in the moves. Between the earthquake and everything else, it got lost. But could you send me a copy of that picture? I remember it well. And I was wearing my pink boa. You were wearing your pink boa. That is correct. I will definitely find that picture, and I will send it off to you because you're my longtime close personal friend, Elaine Ballas. But before... You were uh, riding on the Green Line in Boston, Massachusetts. You were making waves out in Hollywood, California, starting as a child, acting in what, commercials? I started off as a professional ice skater because um, I started doing shows. And back in those days, there was a big difference between amateurs and pros. If you did anything where there was money involved, you could not be an amateur. So um, at the age of eight, I started doing shows, ice shows. And then um, there was a talent agent at the rink. And it was, I'll tell you, this is the best part about it. And I just love telling the story. It was at a rink called the Polar Palace in Hollywood, which is right across the street from Paramount Studios. And it's, it was adjacent. They were like backed up to one another of Raleigh Studios. And the people who owned Raleigh Studios also owned the rink. And then when the rink burned down, they never rebuilt the rink, which was the saddest thing in the world. And Raleigh Studios took over. Now, here's where it gets good. So anytime I go to a screening or any event at Raleigh Studios, I always tell the guards and everybody the story, and they look at me as if I'm, like, from another planet, which I am, but that's okay. And um, I tell them the story, and I go, that's where I learned to skate. This is where all the stars used to come. And really, a lot of people from Paramount would come over there and skate or, 
you know, have fun. And the good thing about skaters is they really don't care. It's all about them and the ice, you know? So the stars felt very comfortable because nobody really bothered them. You know, it was like, okay, now you're on my turf. So you have to look out for me, you know? So it was great. We had a great relationship. Everybody got along and it was the saddest thing. But the best part was I did a movie called Love Without Hairs, and um, I'm still waiting for it to be released, but they did have the screening at Raleigh Studios where I learned to skate. So it's full circle. Unbelievable. Full circle there. Now, you are, well, you, like I said, I've known you for a long period of time, and you were a professional skater as a child. Now, now when, when, you, when you talk about that, were you doing stuff like what Dorothy Hamill does? Well... Yes, but back in those days, um, you did learn all of your doubles, and actually Dorothy just, she never did any triples or anything like that in competition. It pretty much stopped with Dorothy, you know, where it was all doubles. And now it's like you have to do a quad, and some people are trying quints. And I feel very sorry for them because when they get older, they'll definitely be having every replacement possible. Now I've never, I've never asked I've never asked you this, dear uh, Elaine. When now would you consider it going to into the Olympics for ice skating? Well, um, because I turned pro when I was young, um, no, <laughs> uh, plain and simple. But I love doing shows and I love entertaining and I, you know, most of all now, especially in acting, I love to make people laugh. So you know, I love comedies and you know that's my that's my biggest passion is entertainment. And as in anything, you know, skating is so political or something could happen to you or you could have a bad skate one day. You never know. I mean, it's all so different, but I love the discipline I learned from skating. I enjoyed skating. I still have friends from skating and now I've just, you know, kind of transferred all of what I learned of the discipline from skating into acting, you know, how to prepare for something, how to learn your lines. If you're doing a, a stage performance or a live performance and you have your number down where, you know, where your lines are going to be. And just like I was doing a routine, I would do the same training. I don't know if you know this or not, but you know who my neighbor used to be about 20 years ago? Let's see, in Boston, Tenley Albright. No, Nancy Kerrigan. Oh, that's right. Yes, she is a Bostonian. Right, this was, well, before, Massachusetts. This was before she got clubbed on the leg by Tanya Harding. Well, it wasn't really Tanya. It was kind of a... Tanya didn't do it. Well, she you know? paid somebody to but, do it. Well, that was, she didn't really do that either. But what had happened was... Um, her husband was not the most respectable human being probably in the world. You, you can you can and you can call him what? a scumbag. You can call him a scumbag. <laughs> and he got his friends and I don't know what transpired. You know, they didn't include me in the conference call. Oh, they didn't. Huh? They said we're not tell no. So, I don't really know all the details, but I did meet I met both of them actually. Um, actually at the same place, but not at the same time. And, um, Nancy was doing, uh, skating with the stars when they had that for a hot minute. And I'm not sure what Tanya was doing at the rink. I mean, she was signing autographs and stuff and she was really actually very nice. Um, she was very nice. It's sad. She was a very good skater and, just like not even I can't even say girl gone wrong because I don't think she ever had it right in her life you know I think now she's happy but growing up I mean her mother was a little worse than maybe most skating mothers she didn't really have the look or anything of a skater you know like she didn't really have the skater's body or the skater's look or any of the things that they expect from a female skater and but she was really a good skater and she just didn't have the refinement I guess is the word so you know she just never had a shot and I don't know I guess her husband was 
not the best influence on her. No, he was a ham and egger, in my opinion. He was, uh, yeah, he was not a good influence on her. And it's really sad because had she been, had that not happened, I think, I think Kanye would have done well at the Olympics and nationals. Well, that's all in the past. When we're talking about the future, I'm talking to my good friend Elaine Ballas. You have broken bread, Miss Ballas, with none other than Mel Brooks. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I was in four of his movies. I was in, um, I knew him. Actually, this is a really funny story. Mel saw me skate for a Friars Club in Los Angeles. And Milton Berle, I was just a little girl. And Milton Berle was the MC. And um, I didn't know Mel was in the audience. I didn't even know who he was. I think I was like maybe eight. I don't know. And um, years later, I ran into him on the Fox lot, and we were talking, and I went in, and Alan Ladd Jr., who was head of Fox at the time, he was in his office, and I just knew it was Mel from only part of the back of his head was out, and I just knew, and I ran in there. And when you're young, and they don't care, they just figure you're young and dumb, what do you know, right? I go in there, and I just stared at him. And then I started reciting almost every line from Blazing Saddles. I don't know why I recited every line from Blazing Saddles. The movie it was already made. But anyway, nonetheless, I recited every line just about. And he looked at me, and he goes, and you are? <laughs> And I go, oh, I'm Elaine Ballas. And and he goes, and you're working on, I go, well, I'm an actress, but I'm also a professional ice skater. And we were talking and he goes, you really are. And he goes, where have you skated? And we were talking and it turned out he really did see me skate. So, um, and we were friends ever since. And that was a hundred years ago. Now give us the 411. What four movies of, your, of Mel Brooks's were you in? Okay. I was in Spaceballs. What part? I was... I was, um, when he first comes in with his head on backwards or his ass on backwards, whichever you want to say, right. um, I was, I was there, not the tall space commander, but I was his first space captain. And I was in, um, a couple other scenes that he was in as, as I was the first space commander. Then I was also in, um, life stinks and I played the Ivana Trump character where they go, you know, where they kind of break in the party that they're having the homeless break in and they go, we really fucked this up. I was the, you know, I was trying to get them out of my party in uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights, which was probably the most fun movie ever. Um, I was the one that, as a matter of fact, when Dick Van Patten passed, rest his soul, uh, it was our scene that they used on Entertainment Tonight. And I was um, the female wedding guest who spoke to Dick Van Patten. And then in Dracula Dead and Loving It, I was the ballroom guest who kind of let people know that Leslie Nielsen was a vampire. You let the cat because out of the bag. Because cast a shadow in the mirror. Yeah. Or I should say the vampire so, out of the coffin. There you go. And um, that was really a fun movie, too. I had so much fun on that lot. It was great. And Mel's office is still on that lot. I would like to be invited out there and hang around with Mel Brooks. Well, if it ever happens, you will get an invite. Unbelievable. But right now, everything is so uncertain. And the thing that is so sad is that we're all just, like, trapped, you know? And it's, for example, I called Judy Tenuta. Did you meet her that night that you were out at the Hollywood Museum? Yes, I did. I, I sat there and I chatted with you and Judy and Don Wells. Oh, Don Wells, isn't she? She's still beautiful. She's still Marianne to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's still, and she's very gracious, too. She's such a sweetheart. And um, and Judy is so funny. I love Judy. And I called her up, and I just said, Judy, how are you? Are you okay? And she goes, 
Elaine, I'm afraid to leave my house. I'm in my pajamas every day. Well, I know the feeling. But getting back to that night in Hollywood, I actually made Marianne laugh, and she said, I'm going to borrow that. Or I should say Don Wells, uh, because she asked me the standard question, Marianne or Ginger? And I looked her straight in the eyes, and I said, Don, to me, Ginger is a root that you put in a smoothie somewhere down the line, and she just cracked up and she says, I'm going to use that. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a great line. Right. I might use it too, but I'll give you credit. Go I right promise. ahead. That's T to the C to the Ristani. T to the C to the Ristani. Correct. Okay. Now, which one of us, I think we'll both just answer to TC. Fine. That doesn't matter. I, I don't have the name copyright. I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't copyright the alphabet. But I want to go back to the last time I saw you face-to-face, which was in early December of 2019, before the world went to hell with coronavirus. We were at the wonderful oh, and know. fantastic Hollywood Museum for the debut of the Back to the Future exhibit. And I flew out from Boston, Massachusetts, personally invited by the producers of Back to the Future that night, Mr. Bob Gale. And uh, I was going through the crowd, looking at all the great memorabilia, and out of nowhere, I hear someone call my name, and I turn around, and it was you. I know, because I remembered you from the green line. Correct, yeah. I remembered you. And so, um, of course, I was going to call out your name. There were so many people there that day, and we could never have that again, probably, because now... Um, they're going to do all this social distancing for long periods of time. And it's so sad. But if everything goes back to normal one day, everybody listening, if you ever come to Los Angeles, you must go to the Hollywood Museum because they have so many wonderful exhibits. I mean, they have the Back to the Future. They have the Batman, Wonder Woman, Catwoman. Um, they have... Um, in the lobby series, they had Don Wells. In the lobby series, they had Not Landing Ladies, and they had Barbara Eden. They had um, Lucille Ball. Uh, her granddaughter was um, there one night, and they had so many wonderful exhibits that if they ever allow people to get back to normal where they're not having to keep everyone at, you know, a minimum and a distance, then um, definitely go to the Hollywood Museum. And Danelle Dadigan is just wonderful. She's so gracious. It's I call it her home, and I just say thank you for sharing your home with us. Oh, I, 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 agree. I agree. I've been to Hollywood a gazillion times, and uh, without question, the greatest stop not just for tourists, but anybody, is the Hollywood Museum right there in downtown Hollywood. I could spend an entire evening in there and never get bored looking at these same exhibits. I know. And they do have revolving exhibits. Oh, and on the second floor, they had the Pointer Sisters. That was an unbelievable night. I wish you would have come out for that one, too. That one was unbelievable. So many people were there, and it was just great. And I'm not sure if their stuff is still housed there because it was supposed to have left, but maybe with coronavirus, they may have kept it there a little bit longer. I don't know, or I don't know what they're doing, or if they just said, we're taking our stuff and getting it, you know, sanitized and we're moving on. I don't know, but it's just, it's all so uncertain right now. I have four films that are due to come out, and I don't know if and when they're going to be released. Oh, they'll be released. I have Love Without... um, They have... uh, I have Love Without Hairs, which is a wonderful movie. It's um, a two-person movie, and it's a 90-minute movie, and it was written by Raphael Bunuel, who is the son of same director Louis Bunuel from the 60s. And... um, so he was a very famous director and was even at Cannes and won all kinds of awards. But that one, they can go to the um, the Buñuel Barbera, B-U-N-U-E-L Barbera, B-A-R-B-E-R-A. 
um, website and they can see the trailer for that one. And then I have one that um, is called Dared. It's short for um, I Dared My Best Friend to Ruin My Life. That's supposed to come out in um, September. They did have a watch party last week, but um, it's due to come out September of this year. And then, um, so maybe, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, another movie I did was called Gaysism, and um, I played an interfaith minister marrying a gay couple, and one was white and one was black, and had no idea that the prejudices are in that community as well. And I didn't even know that. You know, I didn't, I learned so much. And um, the last movie I did, which just, I just finished um, a couple weeks ago, that one is going to be very funny. And hopefully, that one I can't talk about really because we signed releases that we wouldn't really talk about it. But I promise you, you will laugh. Unbelievable. Non-disclosure agreements. You can't talk about it, Elaine. I can't talk about it. All I can tell you is it is going to be very, very, very funny. And speaking of very, very, very funny, you can follow The Adventures of Elaine Ballas on her YouTube show, Camp Elaine. Now give us the 411 on Camp Elaine, Elaine. Okay. Well, Kathy Lane started many, many, many years ago. Actually, it started way back when I started producing a show for somebody, um, a re- kind of a religious, well, I guess it was spiritual, you know, um, Church of Religious Science. So that's like, um, you know, just a spiritual church, non-denominational. It's all about spirit and stuff. So I was producing for a person on that for that um, place for the church and he decided he didn't really want to do it anymore and the people where I was doing the show when it started off on public access the great days of public access um, before YouTube and everything and they go you should do your own show And I thought, oh, that would be fun, you know, because I had done one a long time ago, but that was it. And so one day I did it, and then it just blossomed from there, and I just did everything I ever wanted to do. I interviewed people. I did sketch comedy. I did everything I could have ever imagined or wanted to do. And um, the show was really, really popular in the 90s. And uh, then I didn't really do it for a long time, and then... In the 2000s, I decided, well, I'll go back and try it again. And it is still those shows they can see. There, they all they have to do is go to YouTube Campy Lane. And then um, there are two ones. The ones that they have to look for to follow me on YouTube is the one that says Campy Lane. And that's the one where I'm doing the audition. So if you click that and then it says subscribe, Everybody hit subscribe because I don't know where my phantom fans have gone. Now, from someone who loves to do improv, does Mel Brooks allow a lot of improv on his set or is it strictly by the script? Both. (laughs) Um, It depends. If your improv is good, he'll let it go. If it's not, stick to the script. Unbelievable. Now, you're a, you're a trained actress, and you're also doing your, your, your comedy as well. Which do you prefer? Do you like reading the script or like improv I cannot read from the script. I have to improv my own words. I like improv better because I do like my own words. Um, <laughs> but when I'm writing them, I can't even remember my own words, so it's okay. Um, I just change them. But Mel will always say to me, Lee, you're so funny. And I go, oh, Mel, they're all your words. I just kind of mix them up a little bit. <laughs> now, if you had your, if you had a time machine, which actor, past, present, or future that you never worked with would you have loved to work with? Elizabeth Taylor. Really? Why, why Elizabeth Taylor? Because Elizabeth Taylor is a Pisces like I am. And she said... Um, 
Curse the day I was born, a Piscean woman. But when I die, I will know that I had lived. And I could so relate to that. You don't have eight husbands, though, right? I don't know. But, you know, I could feel her pain as a Pisces. Really? We're so passionate. That's why, that's why I think she was such a wonderful actress, because she was so passionate. She could never get it right with men. I could identify with that. And um, she was passionate about everything. And I think she was very lovely and kind and, you know, cared about everybody. I really believe it. I would have loved to have met her. Really? Okay. Well, that's that's good to know. Do you think you'll ever bring your show out to L.A., like, on a visit, like Johnny Carson, when he would, like, when he was doing it in New York, and then he would come to L.A. sometime? Well, you know, you're my Hollywood hookup out there, Elaine, so why don't you dial the 411 get Mel on the phone and say, Mel, I know this kid from Boston, Massachusetts, who's going to blow away the late-night scene out here. All he needs is a producer, and who better than Mel Brooks? I know, but he's in isolation right now because did you see that video that he and Max did about coronavirus? I did. And social distancing? That's hysterical. Do you know that it got 12 million views within 24 hours, less than 24 hours? That's fantastic. 12 million. It went, it went viral. Elaine, you don't want to say that word viral in this day and age. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I guess that's why they're gonna have to come up with some new words, huh? It went supersonic. Supersonic. That was good, but that's like you know, isn't that a hamburger place or something or an ice cream place? Oh, you're thinking of Sonic? Yeah. Well, you know, this is supersonic, not not Sonic. Oh, okay. Well, it did. It went. It went global. No, that's not a good word either. <laughs> Anyway, a lot, of, let's just say a lot of people thought. I mean, I would love to bring my show to Hollywood, California, because I need a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And the Hollywood Museum has always asked me, can we please put one of your sequin jackets in our display case? And it just hasn't been the right time. That would be so great to have a special Hollywood night at the museum. Hey, I've got an idea. Maybe when everything calms down, you could see if you could do a Hollywood night at the museum. And my first guest with you. would be, obviously, Elaine Ballas. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. Or maybe you could be my I Ed McMahon. That. You could be my Ed McMahon I that will night. Be, I, will be, I will be your Ed McMahon, but I want to be a guest, too. All right. Well, you because can do both. I think, you're just, I think you are so wonderful. You're such a great host. Well, I'm not going to gloat. I, I am a five-time award-winning best talk show host. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a humble man. But who's counting, right? But who's counting? Not me. Not me. I'm waiting for number six, though. No, not you. Five times, but who's counting? Yeah. Let's go for, now we got to go for the other five so you'll have ten. That is true. A perfect ten, T.C. Rustani. Right. Well, see, I only have two awards, and that was for, um, the soap opera that people can watch, since they're all marooned in their homes right now, um, they can watch The Rich and the Ruthless on UMC. And we won uh, twice for Best Ensemble in a Comedy. Fantastic. So um, I got to catch up with you now, right? I got to get three more awards. Well, you'll, 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 you'll do it. I mean, you, I, I guarantee you, because any friend of T.C. Rustani's is a talented person. I only hang around with talented individual, and Elaine Ballas is one of those talented individuals. And you follow her on every social media platform, find her on YouTube, and God damn it, uh, you need to be on my program face-to-face, -face because we've always talked about this for years, and we just ha couldn't make it happen because you're on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast, but we will make it happen I in know. 2020. Look at I know, and now look what happened. They're trying to stop us. But this is just going to slow us down. It's not going to stop us. Everything will be healed. We will be healed. We will be healed, you know, and then we can do it. But I think you should bring your show out um, to late night because actually, let's see, who do we have out here at late night? We have Jimmy Kimmel which is around the corner. Did you see where Jimmy Kimmel Oh, yeah, shoots? yeah, yep. Yeah. I, was, I was trying to knock okay. on the door. Yep. He's, uh, knock on the door again. Um, actually, on the heels, you've got to go around the back. Right. I didn't, I didn't think of that. 
Yeah, on his you've got to go around the back. And then they have um, James Corden. Right. He's out here. And, and, Conan, o- and Conan O'Brien is out there, fellow Bostonian. <laughs> right, I forgot. He's over at um, the Universal lot, I believe. No, he's at Warner Brothers. At Warner's? Oh, I love Warner Brothers. Conan is actually, I met Conan once, and he's actually very, very nice. I was surprised he was so nice. And we were fighting over Mel Brooks because I said he's my favorite person. And Conan said, no, he was his favorite person. So we were fighting over him. Just think if I showed up, everybody would be fighting over me. That's true. Does he, have you ever interviewed Conan? I have never interviewed Conan O'Brien. I, um, I'm the biggest Hollywood stars that I've had on my program. Uh, you may be familiar Me? With, well, other than you on the podcast, but I'm talking about on my television version. Uh, okay. On my television version, I interviewed the late, great Sherman Helmsley from the Jeffersons. I love him. Moving on up to the east side. Yes. And Academy Award nominee, Mr. Miyagi himself, Pat Morita. Well, I'll tell you a little story about Pat Morita. I do know Pat Morita. He did, um, I was on, I did a few episodes of Welcome Back, Cotter, and he was on Welcome Back, Cotter. I remember him from Happy Days. went over to Happy Days. Right. Yes, I was just going to say, but he did our show first. And he was very close friends with Red Fox. Um, I think I met Red Fox once over at NBC when I was on Days of Our Lives when I was really, really young. And do you remember, do you know who Wesley Yore is? Of course I do. He, he was on, he was on Land of the Lost. Yes. Anyway, he was also on, um, Days of Our Lives and the first day on the show, cause I was young and he was young. And so we like bonded kind of instantly. And then he, um, he goes, come on, I'll teach you on the tour at NBC. And he took me over to NBC and we pretended, now that it's not there, I guess we could let it out, um, pretended that we were on the Johnny Carson show, on the Tonight Show. And he played Johnny and I played the guest and then he played the guest and I played Johnny. On the Tonight Show set? On the Tonight Show set, yes. And we ran out of there before we were caught. <laughs> That that's but that's that was fun. That's holy ground for us talk show hosts. Yes. So that's that one was really, really fun. Now how long were you on Days of Our Lives for? Um, a couple of months. I think I, that was a couple months. I watched Days of Our Lives back in nineteen ninety four when Marlena was possessed by the devil. Oh, no, it was before that. Oh, it was way before but, that. Yeah, but that was, uh, yeah, but that's was when I started before watching. That. My, uh, but um, she was on the show then. She's been on forever. Right, she was on one of my favorite shows as a kid, Electra Woman and Diner Girl. What shows? Electra Woman and Diner Girl was done by the Sid and Marty Croft production, which is a tie-in to Wesley okay. Yurk. Marty makes everything work, and Sid is the creative one. Right, I've met them both, and Sid was definitely the creative one, and Marty was the uh, was the bookkeeper. Right, he was he he was, you know, the one to make it work. Elaine, one more time before we let you go, give everybody the four one one. Where on social media we can find you? Okay, we'll start off on Facebook. Facebook, Elaine Ballas, E-L-A-I-N-E-B-A-L-L-A-C-E. On Twitter, Elaine Ballas, at Elaine Ballas, or the best one really probably is Elaine Ballas at Camp Elaine, C-A-M-P Elaine, all one word. And then on um, Instagram, and please, people, follow me. I need two more followers to have 150. I'm so excited. Um on Instagram, it's Elaine Ballas, E-L-A-I-N-E-B-A-L-L-A-C-E. So they have no excuses. I expect to get tons of followers tonight. Unbelievable. they're your fans. They are my fans. and They're, they're gonna, your fans. And they're going to be your fans, too. So every Friday when I... We're sharing them because we're twins. We are twins. We, 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 we talked about this at the beginning of the program. We are twins. And every Friday, like clockwork, on, on hashtag FF, which is Follow Friday, I put in there, at Camp Elaine. 
You're the best. That's why I love you. Unbelievable. You know what? You love her. My longtime close personal friend, the very talented Elaine Ballas. Thank you for being on After Hours of T Series Donnie, the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. And I can't wait till you come to Hollywood. Let's put it out into the universe that you are coming to Hollywood. And as soon as travel is permitted, you will be here. I will be. TC will stand for the coast. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. I hope your audience loved it. I'm sure they will.